Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So Happy New Year 2022! So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So before today's video, I want to make a really quick announcement is that I will be hosting two sets of live classes every weekend. So starting on January the 15th and the four weeks following, I will be teaching a beginner's drawing and painting class live on Zoom. So that's every Saturday from 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to around 10.30. And every Sunday of this month, starting this Sunday, January the 9th, at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'll be hosting another 1 hour 30 minute sketch session. And that's for people of all levels. So I'll be sketching one or two things in my art journal of an object or scenery or two um, in my home. And that's going to be a really fun session sketching together. So you can follow along with my reference image or you can find something similar in your own home. So you can find the links to sign up for the beginner's drawing and painting class and also the Sunday sketch along sessions in the description part of my video. So just scroll down on your laptop, computer or your cell phone and you're going to see here Join me in the January sketch along sessions live on Zoom and beginners drawing and watercolor painting class live on Zoom. So you just click and the link is going to pop up and so you can purchase and then after purchasing you're going to get the uh, Zoom link and more information will follow. So I look forward to seeing you in the live sessions. Now let's begin today's video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you my full process, drawing and painting on this page of my art journal. So I went to the mall with my mom to do some shopping. And afterwards, I got a cup of coffee from one of my favorite cafes and a blueberry scone. I'm going to sketch it first in my art journal. And here's a blank page. So the lid of the coffee cup is a squished cylinder shape and the top is an oval and this defines the thickness of the first layer, the middle part and the lower part and actually another layer on the bottom and the rim and this inner curves gives even more three dimension to the lid and the opening. Now I'm drawing the left side of the cup slanting down inwards symmetry for the right hand side and the bottom is a curve okay so i actually tore the scone into two pieces and now i'm drawing this one piece outside the paper bag starting with the outline so when drawing something with lots of details so first of all just focus on the outline don't worry about the details yet and now gradually adding some more important details inside. Because there are too many details, we don't have to include everything. Just include this arc over here that defines the thickness of the scone using a lot of broken lines, short broken lines and some darker lines to suggest the texture on the surface of the scone and also the blueberry pieces using um, solid black shapes. Some more on the uh, dissection part too. So before drawing the other piece of scone, I'm adding these cute little details on the uh, paper coffee cup. Blend is the name of the cafe and those Christmas um, little ornaments. Okay, that's it. And now I'm visualizing the size and placement of the paper bag. It's behind. I want it to be this big. Okay. And a paper bag is actually a squished shape of a prism. As you can see, I'm trying to add these very simple but defining lines to give the three dimension 
of a prism or a box. Adding a bit of shade there. Okay, now the prism form is here. And now I'm ready to add the outline of the other piece of scone inside the bag. And the blueberry pieces with dark shapes, broken lines to suggest the texture of the scone. Okay, now I'm just drawing these letters of the cafe's brand. And actually those are upside down. Okay, that's it for the drawing. And now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So as always, I'm wetting the uh, area first with clear water by squeezing my water brush. And now I'm putting on some yellow ochre mixed with a little bit medium yellow. This is only the first layer. For the scone, nice and light. Now I'm wetting the cup area, ready to add colors on. Viridian green, mixing with a little bit burnt sienna to get the color that I see. I'm switching to my uh, medium tip Sakura water brush now because it's easier to sit, to kind of skip around those details. Mixing in a little bit of um, yellow or yellow ochre. You know, because this is a three-dimensional shape. Not all areas look exactly the same solid green. By using a couple of different greens on the surface of the cup really helps with the uh, smoothness of the round surface. Okay, and just adding a few more colors for the uh, little details on the cup. And now I'm mixing the color for the second layer of the scone. Orange. Orange mixed with a little bit of um, yellow ochre. For the second layer, again, as you can see, I'm not covering everything from the first layer. So now I have two layers of paint colors visible. Now I'm painting the, uh, the cup's lid with leftover color. Mix of ultramarine blue with purple. Now it looks more three-dimensional with these shade colors. Okay, now I'm ready to add the third layer of color for the scone. So I mix a, a little bit of purple into orange because purple is a complementary color of orange and it gives the shade color for something that is orange. Okay, so now the scone looks more defined. And now I'm painting the paper bag with um, leftover yellow ochre mixed with medium yellow. Nice and light. It's not as solid as the scones. A little bit shade color around the side. Okay, and just squinting my eyes a little bit to see the shade color and the shadow color inside and outside the paper bag. So it's just a bit, very lightly on the surface, but there are a lot inside. And another layer of shadows for the inside. And on top of that scone piece too, a little bit on this scone piece on the front side. Okay, so now I'm gonna paint a platform so these things can stay on the page in a more stable way. I'm using magenta mixing with a little bit of a burnt sienna. Nice and light. And now I'm mixing the shadow color by putting in ultramarine blue into the pink purple around the bottoms of these things. Darker around the edge. That's it. Okay, so the next day in the evening, I saw this beautiful, inspiring sunset outside my reading room window. And of course, I'm going to sketch it in my art journal. Here is a look. And I'm going to sketch the sunset sky above. 
So really like collaging things together to make up a narrative visually. So instead of using a pencil, I'm always visualizing the size and placement first before I start putting my line on paper. So I'm starting with this foreground element first. These two evergreen trees on the side and the tip of the rooftop of my neighbor's house. It's a little bit of um, house frame details. Adding some more tree textures using very simple squiggly lines. Okay, so this is the left-hand side. Now I'm connecting it to the things in the middle that I see, those rooftops and this lamp. And the triangular shape of the house in the middle and another um, lamp. There's a pole there, there's quite a lot of overlapping. And there's another triangular rooftop of the other house on the right hand side, some trees behind it. So again, I decided to finish the drawing later and paint right now because the sunset colors are fading away really fast. All right, so I'm just wetting the sky area first with clear water, adding a very thin streak of orange yellow, pretty watery because sky color is pretty much always translucent. And then putting on some red magenta, wet on wet. Now on top, I'm putting on some cerulean blue mixed with a little bit green to have this turquoise color that I observed, nice and fresh. And not over stirring because I want a really soft edge between the sky and that warm piece of cloud. And now I'm putting on a few brush strokes of stronger magenta red on top of that orange cloud and mix ultramarine blue with purple and a little bit green to paint these darker parts or the shade color of the cloud. Just following what I see and just let the blendings go by themselves instead of over stirring with my brush. All right, and nice and peaceful. and adding another dark streak of dark blue color on top of that cloud as I see. And I think that's it. I'm not going to overwork on the sky. And this is the look of the sky right now. So decision making is really important and it's good to be flexible when we're sketching. Okay, now I'm ready to come back to my pen drawing to finish the lower part of this sketch. To keep adding more layers of house structures there, a lot of overlapping and foreshortening, and then adding these little green bushes in front of this house, the balcony, the door, and the windows. I like coloring the windows with solid black just to give more density to the house. Another window here and another window here. I know when you're drawing houses, you might think there's too much details. But for me, I focus only on the main characteristics of houses, like the windows and the geometric shapes, the arcs, the rooftop shapes, and that's it. I don't over add too much details other than those. And now I'm just adding this car parked in front of the house. And that's pretty much it. And just adding a last bit of a um, street line here. Also here. And that's it. Oh, last bit of uh, detail for this, for these trees in the foreground. A little bit here too. And that's it. I like to keep things very simple. And now I'm ready to come back to watercolors again. Just wetting the areas first with clear water so the colors can spread out fast and easily. Painting the houses with a warm medium yellow and the lawns very thin green mixed with a little bit yellow ochre. Pretty warm yellow in the evening sunshine. 
and same for these evergreen trees, play around with verdant green and medium yellow or yellow ochre. And mixing this dark brown with burnt sienna and a little bit ultramarine blue. Mixing in a little bit burnt sienna into verdant green to get this shade color for the trees. So adding these strong greens are, is very important to give accentuation to this sketch, just to guide the viewer's eyes around this image with these strong tones. Just adding last bit of um, warm yellow for the houses. Very nice balance of warm and cold colors here in this sketch. And adding final bits of gray for the street down here, trying to create a really nice smooth transition between this um, landscape sketch and the food sketches below. That's it. So that's it for today's video. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you very soon next time. Have a great day.